Welcome to World Action and Reaction News, please press subscribe button and, and press bell icon if you are new to the channel let's start news snapshot. American Aerospace and Defense Major Lockheed Martin on Monday urged India to work on couple of areas like fast tracking defense procurement procedures with a view to attract companies in the sector. Phil Shaw, Chief Executive, Lockheed Martin India said that the company wants to invest in India and include the country in its supply chain. He said that besides improving ease of doing business, there are couple of things that need to be done by the central government to facilitate investments for the defence sector in India. One, he said, is length of defence procurement is pretty long and in this area, states can collectively encourage the central government to speed up the process to start to see some of the investments. Also the predictability of some procurement are little bit suspect, he said here at CII's Partnership Summit. Shaw added that when a company spending many years talking about particular programs and if they get cancelled or postponed, it is a bit disincentive for them. He said Indian government wants to promote defence manufacturing under the Make in India initiative but Make in India in defence is reliant on these procurement decisions. The Indian Air Force IAF, and aerospace industry are keen to collaborate with the state government to set up a drone testing and certification centre in the state. At a session on aerospace and defence sector at the Partnership Summit on Sunday, discussions were held on the challenges of creating a manufacturing ecosystem and what role AP can play in its development, in attracting FDI and facilitate the success of Make in India push in the A&D sector. The panelists who comprised of dignitaries from the defence and industries sector also stressed on the need to bridge the trust deficit between public and private sectors and the need for them to collaborate on manufacturing defence equipment. Nine MAUs, all of them connected with defence and aerospace, were signed which will involve investment to the tune of Rs 9,341 crore and provide 5,700 employment opportunities. Besides moderator Amber Dubby, Partner and Head of Aerospace and Defence Sector at KPMG, the panelists included Aaron A. Kar Mishra, CEO and MD of Jenser Aerospace, V. Venkata Rayu, Chairman and MD of VEM Technologies, Anil Gupta, Country Head of Military Aircraft Airbus, Air Marshal Ashwani Kumar Nabite, ACAS Operations, IAF, and Commodore AJ Sharma from Bharat Faujay. There is already a drone corporation existing in the state. IAF is keen to collaborate with the AP government to set up a testing and certification center here. However, we are yet to get permission from the center, said Air Marshal Ashwani Kumar. The Future Infantry Combat Vehicle, FICV, project worth about Rs 60,000 crore which began nearly a decade ago could finally progress this month. A panel of independent expert monitors, IEMs, appointed by the Defence Ministry, has found that the evaluation process for selecting firms to produce prototypes of the FICV is correct and the project should move forward. The panel also said that a complaint filed by Mahindra is unfounded and was lodged to stall the procurement procedure, a top ministry source said. A MOD department dealing with the project had questioned the evaluation process at a late stage delaying the project. In addition, the complaint from Mahindra, one of the contenders, added to this delay. Experts say that it is ultimately the army which has been adversely affected with the delays. It desperately wants to replace its Soviet-era BMP-2 infantry combat vehicle fleet. So, the FICV program has to progress because it will not just be a lethal platform, but also be the base for other defense R&D programs and a test of the Make in India initiative. Explaining what led to the delays, sources said that the second expression of interest, EOI, in the project was issued to 10 vendors on July 16, 2015. An EOI seeks a firm's proposal, capital expenditure, and other details. The MOD had approved that government DPSU, Ordnance Factory Board, OFB, with two private firms would make the prototype. 
On February 15, 2016, the MOD received responses to the EOI from LNT, Mahindra, Reliance Defense, Consortium of Tata Motors and Bharat Forge, OFB and Consortium of Tata Power Said and Titagar Wagons Limited. A MOD Integrated Project Management Team, IPMT, evaluated the responses on a few criteria such as commercial viability and technical capabilities of the firm. The IPMT submitted its report containing the shortlisted firms to the acquisition wing for approval in November 2016. The Department of Defense Production, DDP, mulled recommendations it received to either start the project afresh or select the five private industries to submit the detailed project report, DPR, explained sources. A Defense Ministry report has listed out in black and white what is ailing India's weapons procurement process which promises years of delay between drawing up a wish list of weapons and soldiers getting to fire one. A Defence Ministry report, accesses exclusively by NDTV, has revealed that India's weapons procurement process has been severely affected due to multiple and diffused structures with no single point accountability. Multiple decision heads, duplication of processes, delayed comments, delayed execution, no real-time monitoring no project-based approach and a tendency to fault-find rather than to facilitate. The report, prepared late last year by Minister of State for Defence Subash Bamra, reveals all the loopholes in the functioning of Defence Ministry. There has been at least seven major defence scams in India since independence, leading to the fall of government and ministers. The major one being Beaufort's scam in the 1980s that led to the fall of Rajiv Gandhi government over charges that the Swedish gun manufacturer paid bribes to supply howitzer. The scam generated so much heat and scare among bureaucrats that India did have howitzers for 20 long years despite being hemmed in by Pakistan and China. The flaws have also turned out be a major obstacle for the Make in India initiative for the defence sector, launched in 2014. The 27-point internal report says, of 144 deals in the last three financial years, only 8% 10% fructified within the stipulated time period, it says. The report also says that the Army, Air Force, Navy and Coast Guard do not work as a system, which puts greater strain on the limited defense budget. Sterlite Technologies on Monday said it has been awarded a Rs 3,500 crore advance purchase order to design, build and manage the Indian Navy's communications network. The Rs 3,500 crore system integration project will enable the Indian Navy with a digital communications network at PAR with the most advanced naval forces globally, the company said in a statement. This will give the Navy digital defence supremacy at PAR with the best naval forces globally. This is the first time that an integrated naval communications network at such a scale is being built in India, the company added. The Navy's communications network has been envisioned as a smarter network infrastructure with enhanced throughput, high-quality secure services and ease of network management. The scope requires Sterlite Tech to design, build and manage the communications network for over a decade through its system integration capabilities, it said. Our recent experience of creating an intrusion-proof communication network for the Indian Army in Jammu and Kashmir will be leveraged for the Navy's communications network. We look forward to delivering this end-to-end -end strategic network for the Indian Navy with our unique software to silicon capabilities, said Anand Agarwal, CEO, Sterlite Technologies. French weekly financial newspaper La Tribune in its latest report has said that France and India are on track to power the Indian Light Combat Aircraft, LCA, with the M88 as part of the Kaveri program which currently is been resurrected with French help. La Tribune report says that major announcement will be made when Emmanuel Macron is on a trip to India from March 10 onwards. French defence manufacturer Safran in 2016 agreed to help revive India's long-stalled Kaveri gas turbine engine project. French company had said it will require 25-30% to 30 more work to make the Kaveri engine to be combat-worthy. France offered €1 billion Euro investment to revive the project as part of Dassault Rafale purchase offset clause. French side had said that it will take 18 months to make Kaveri flight-worthy. 
DRDO Chief Drive S. Christopher in 2017 had said that LCA Tejas will fly with Indo-French Cavalry engine by 2019 Aero India. M884E in its present stage can generate only 75 knots of thrust with afterburner. M88-4E Cavalry engine reportedly will be able to generate 88.9 knots to 99 knots of thrust with afterburner due to the limitation of M88 core. India at present uses American General Electric F404GE in 20 turbofan engine generating 89.8 knots of thrust with afterburner to power LCA Tejas MK1. India is set to place orders for 83 LCA Tejas MK1A and has not placed any new orders for General Electric F404GE in 20 turbofan engine. India has procured two General Electric F414 GE in 6 engine with 98 knots of thrust for Tejas MK2 program which is yet to start. India has placed orders for 40 MK1 which are powered by F404 GE in 20 turbofan engine, while the order for 83 MK1A is supposed to happen in next few months. Speculation India and France might have separate engine program to develop a new powerhouse to power India's AMCA 5th generation fighter jet. Two initial NGTD, next generation technology demonstrator, of AMCA will be powered by General Electric F414 GE in 6 engine ordered for Tejas MK2 program. General Electric refusal to provide complete transfer of technology, TOT for F404 GE in 20 turbofan engine lead to the development of the M88-4E Cavalry engine. The Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, India's premier defence institute, on Sunday successfully conducted the test flight of its Rustam-2 drone, which is a medium-altitude long-endurance unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, at Shalakara in Karnataka's Chitradurga district. Much like the Predator drones of the US, Rustam 2 has been developed to carry out surveillance and reconnaissance ISR, roles for the armed forces with an endurance of 24 hours. PTI quoted officials as saying, This is the first flight in user configuration with higher power engine, the DRDO said in a statement. An official statement by the organization read, DRDO successfully flew its Rustam 2 today at its aeronautical test range, ATR at Shalakara at Chitradurga. This flight assumes significance due to the fact that this is the first flight in user configuration with higher power engine. DRDO said the test flight was successful and all its parameters were normal. It also tweeted a video of the flight from its official Twitter handle. Rustam 2 is capable of carrying different combinations of payloads like synthetic aperture radar, electronic intelligence systems and situational awareness payloads, officials said. DRDO Chairman S. Christopher, its Director General of Aeronautical System C. P. Ramanarayanan. G. Electronics and Communication Systems J. Manjula and other senior scientists witnessed the test flight. The around Rs 1,500 crore UAV project was initiated considering requirement of the, the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The UAV has been designed and developed by Aeronautical Development Establishment, AID, of the DRDO, and Aerospace Major Hindustan Aeronautics Ltd and Bharat Electronics Ltd are its production partners.